as a heating fluid moves through pipes. It warms the pipes and increases their temperature above the ambient temperature. This causes the pipe to start exchanging heat with the surrounding air, mostly through external natural convection, for large Rayleigh numbers. Hence, heat is released into the air and the fluid temperature reduces, causing a heat loss. If the heat loss is too large, a proper insulation of the pipes will be needed. But how can we estimate that? In this lesson, we will learn how to analyze systems exchanging heat with a steel fluid surrounding them. We will focus on external natural convection for different canonical shapes, such as cylinders, plates, and spheres that can be representative of many everyday objects. We will introduce correlations that can be used to estimate the average Nussel number and thus the heat transfer for the system. Let's start by defining what is external natural convection. When a system surrounded by a steel fluid is at a different temperature than the fluid, external natural convection occurs. The fluid near the object heats up or cools down, its density changes, and the buoyant force makes the fluid parcels move along the gravitational field direction. The heat transfer analysis for external natural convection consists of defining and using the appropriate correlations to obtain the average Nusel number, estimate the average heat transfer coefficient, and calculate the overall heat transfer. Most of the correlations can be generalized in this form, where the Rayleigh number is uh, calculated using an appropriate characteristic length and estimating the fluid properties at the film temperature. The exponent n is typically one-fourth for laminar flows and one-third for turbulent flows. This means that in turbulent flows the heat transfer coefficient is independent of the body characteristic length. Let's start with our first geometry, the vertical plate. We can use these simple correlations valid for laminar or turbulent flows. However, we can introduce a more complex relation that is valid for any value of Rayleigh number. If more accuracy is needed in the laminar range, this correlation can be used instead. Looking at these correlations, we can see that they are also a function of the Prall number and that a constant term is present. This constant takes into account the effects of heat conduction for flows at small Rayleigh numbers. These correlations are valid for isothermal vertical plates However, they can also be used for constant surface heat flux, when the temperature is not constant along the plate. The trick is to estimate the Nussel number and the Rayleigh number using the temperature difference at the half length of the plate. The value delta T L over 2 can be obtained by combining the average Nussel number relation with the expression for the average heat transfer coefficient and then solving numerically for delta T L over 2. The correlations could also be applied for vertical cylinders as long as the diameter is much larger than the boundary layer thickness. This condition is satisfied if this relation is true for the case in analysis. L is the cylinder height and D is the diameter. 
When the cylinder is too slender, the curvature affects the boundary layer growth and enhances the heat transfer due to natural convection. If we rotate the plate by an angle theta, we obtain an inclined plate, like a tablet on a stand. The gravitational vector now has a component normal to the plate. For the top side of a cold plate or the bottom side of a hot one, the behavior is similar to the vertical plate, but the heat transfer is reduced due to the smaller gravitational component parallel to the plate. For theta between 0 and 60 degrees, we can estimate the heat transfer on these sides of the plates, substituting g with the g cosine theta when calculating the Rayleigh number. On the opposite sides of the plates, instead, the normal component of g pulls the fluid away from the plate and creates three-dimensional patterns. For the cold plate, the fluid moves down and gets replaced by hotter fluid, while for the hot plate, the fluid moves up and the colder fluid replaces it. This motion enhances the heat transfer due to natural convection. Correlations for these sides of the plates can be found in literature on a case-by-case -case basis. An extreme case for the inclined plate is the horizontal plate. Lands or lakes are good examples for the atmospheric convection over horizontal surfaces. If we consider a hot plate the air in contact with the plate gets heated, its density reduces and the buoyant force pulls it away from the top side of the plate, while cooler fluids replaces it. This greatly enhances the heat transfer. On the opposite side, however, the heat transfer is poor. The hot fluid is blocked by the plate and must move sideways before reaching the end of the plate and finally move upward. The opposite pattern can be seen for a cold plate. Adams introduced these correlations for the two sides of the plates. The accuracy can be further improved if the characteristic length is defined as the ratio of the plate area by its perimeter. Let's move now to study cylinders. If we analyze a section of a hot cylinder, we can see that the fluid will form a boundary layer around the body, starting from the bottom side and then moving upward around it. Near the top of the section, the fluid separates into an ascending plume. The opposite can be seen for a cold cylinder. These correlations provide us the average nozzle number along the cylinder circumference, either using different combination of coefficients or as a single formula over a large range of nozzle numbers. In this case, the characteristic length is the cylinder diameter. Last, the sphere. A pattern like the one seen in the section of a cylinder can be seen for the hot or cold spheres. The fluid moves around the sphere and then transforms into an ascending or descending plume. This correlation can be used for the heat transfer analysis. The constant 2 corresponds to the heat transfer due to conduction for a sphere in an infinite medium. This concludes this lesson on external natural convection.